Welcome back. Before I start, let me wish you all a Merry Christmas. We have started with the third chapter in the series and this time it is the sixth graders. And let me tell you, they are one genius of a lot. But before I start, I request you to kindly share, like and subscribe to the channel. Born to lead and excel in this ever challenging world, he is bound to soar higher for he strives to achieve. He is going to captivate you, stimulate you and inspire you to dream big. Want to touch the stars? Then come along and meet our mastermind, Adil Nimrod R. Hi there. Since time immemorial, human beings have been curious to know about nature and its surroundings. Our modern lifestyle is the result of many innovations that follow, be it in the field of food, clothing, shelter, air we breathe, recreation, technology, knowledge understanding, the list goes on. The systematic knowledge gained by humans through observations and experimentations is known as science and a person who possesses the knowledge of science and is engaged in scientific research is known as a scientist. Science is divided into three main branches. They are physics, chemistry and biology. As we all know that physics deals with the different forms of energies and the properties of matter and biology is the study of living organisms which include both plants and animals. Chemistry is also called central science because it connects all the other branches of science together. In Hindi, chemistry is known as Rasa Sastra. Rasa means essence and Sastra means science. In other words, chemistry is the study of matter. All matter, living or non-living, are made up of five different elements. They are sky, air, earth, water and fire. Since these elements are made up of atoms and therefore everything around us is a study of chemistry. Thus, chemistry is a branch of science which deals with the study of substances, their composition, preparation, properties, etc. And the scientist who studies and performs various chemical experiments is known as a chemist. A chemist requires many chemicals, different types of apparatus or equipments to perform these experiments. Such a place is called a chemistry laboratory. A chemistry lab is a variety of glass apparatus and other apparatus. Some of the important ones are test tubes, test tube holder, test tube stand, beaker, flask, conical flask, Bunsen burner, spirit lamp, retort stand, tripod stand, wire gauze, different types of funnels, different types of tubes and measuring apparatus, china dish, petri dish, etc. Then there are different types of papers, chemicals, reagents and whatnot. It's not a joke to set up a chemistry lab. Do you know why so many things are required to set up a chemistry lab? Well, if you know the answer, write to us in the comments below. Just as chemistry has been around since ages and so are the chemists, in olden days chemistry was known as alchemy and chemists as alchemists. These alchemists worked very hard to discover the technique of converting base metals into gold or silver which were used to cure various ailments and prolong life. But over time alchemy lost its importance and more serious chemists emerged. But the achievements of alchemists cannot be ignored. Modern day chemistry owes a great deal to alchemy. The Ion Pillar and Kutub Minar complex is one of the greatest testimonies to the works of alchemists. Even the basic idea of an element were first given by a Greek philosopher named Aristotle. Robert William Boyle was the first chemist who performed experiments under controlled conditions. He is well known for his Boyle's law of gaseous volume and is also known as the father of modern chemistry. Henry Cavendish isolated hydrogen from the residual liquefied air. He named it hydrogen because hydrogen means water generating in Latin. Cavendish also found out that water is a compound of hydrogen and oxygen. Joseph Priestley was a British chemist who discovered oxygen. Antoine Lavoisier was the first chemist to discover that air is a mixture of gases. 
He isolated nitrogen and oxygen and gave the name azote to nitrogen as it was the inactive gas. But the credit for the discovery of nitrogen goes to Daniel Rutherford. John Dalton was the first chemist to propose that matter is made up of tiny indivisible particles called atoms. The atomic theory was also proposed by him. It can be summarized as follows. Matter is made up of indivisible particles called atoms. Atoms can be neither be created nor be destroyed. Atoms of the same elements are alike and atoms of different elements are different. Atoms combine to form molecules and atoms of the different elements combine in whole number ratio to form compounds. Then came other chemists like Sir Humphrey Davy, who isolated sodium and potassium, Mary Curie, who worked in the field of radioactivity and discovered radium, Sir James Chadwick, who discovered neutron and worked on the possibility of an atom bomb, Sir J.J. Thomson, who was the first to discover the subatomic particle called electron, and William Ramsey, who discovered most of the inert gases or noble gases, namely helium, neon, argon, krypton, and xenon. Louis Pasteur, a French chemist, is regarded as one of the greatest saviors of mankind and is responsible for the discovery of pasteurization. Pasteurization is the process of heat processing food to kill pathogenic bacteria to make food safe to eat. Dmitry Mendeleev, a Russian scientist, was the first to classify existing elements according to their properties and listing them in a the form of a table. He is considered as the father of the periodic table. But it was Henry Moseley who listed the elements according to their atomic number. Though there are many other scientists and their achievements cannot be ignored, but for now let us shift our focus to chemistry in our everyday life.